I'm getting ready for bed now, but before I uh, before I actually go to bed, I want to share this post from LinkedIn. Well, about a quote by Will Smith. See that? Now, what am I driving at here? Reddit. People, well, most people would. Um, I think I've discussed this before in in the diaries, but I'll talk about it again. People would first think about um, or think nothing about think think none none other than well, what kind of monetary gain will get, will they get if they do this job, or if they do this project, or if they um, they take on this kind of business. People don't see the value in something for others. Like Will Smith said, well, you gotta make you you gotta make lives better. If you want to well if you want if you want success in life. He's dead right on that. So here's my power tip for you, Reddit. If you want to take on a job or a business, look at its value to other people first. Because, well, they're the ones they're they're the ones who has your money. Okay? They're the ones who are going to give you money for 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 this, All right? Always look at the human value of something first. There's this game I took up again called SimCity Build It and um It's now progressing as a uh, well the city that I want to uh, want to be proud of but uh, sometimes you have to, yeah, you have to sell out a little moolah, just to, just to, just to get the upgrades you needed. That's exactly what I did this afternoon when I um, uh, loaded my loaded my PayMaya wallet with uh, with the uh, with the amount that is uh, that's, that is being requested of me to to avail the premium pass. Right, uh, I've been. Uh, I ended up, uh, I ended up finishing the season with uh, up to tier twenty five. But uh, it's going to be, it's not going to be worth it if I don't get the other the items that is for, uh, for the people who avail of the premium pass. So that's exactly what I did, and I went to the nearest Seven Eleven to load up my pay Maya, and. Uh, got home, got home as quickly as I as I left, and availed of the premium pass, and boom, <sighs> my funds, uh, the, my city's funds are wow, okay, at all time high. I got to uh, I got to expand one of my regions with uh, with with no. Uh, with no expansion items, just the tight with just a special title badge, a lot of benefits. What am I driving at here, Reddit? Well, my uh, paid upgrade wouldn't be possible if I didn't, uh, uh, if I wasn't managing my money from the very start. Okay, I got a special. Um, a special fund set aside for my hobbies like uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, and of course now SimCity Build It. It's called the Hobby Fund. Now, this fund is uh, setting up a fund like this for your from your for your personal financing. is a uh, It's a time saver, and it's a real well. Uh, I get to. Upgrade my hobby a little bit. 
although it's a little bit it's still an upgrade an upgrade is an upgrade I get to enjoy my hobbies more because of this fund I get to uh, well in the case of Yu-Gi-Oh! I get to be more competitive because I, I can now afford the cards that I need. I can afford the cards that I really want to use in the tournament. Go figure. You only need to manage your money if you really want to uh, if you really want to pursue your your passions, your interests, especially your hobbies. Okay? You really need to manage your money. You don't just uh, wait for the next payday to come. And when you're uh, when you get your paycheck, you're gonna you're gonna splurge nearly all of that on your hobbies. Nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Don't do that. All right. Don't you ever do that, especially if you're, especially if you got a, uh, especially if you got a, um, well, if you're fresh out of college and you're just and all you have is a job. The hobby fund is very powerful. Okay, it exemplifies the uh, the money management system that I have learned all those years ago so here's my power tip for you reddit manage your money so that you so that your hobbies will be more uh will be more fun to do in short hobbies need money good thing i uh was able to save this uh Save a screenshot of this post on LinkedIn from last week. And it continuously reminds me of how, how empathic humans should be towards, their, towards other creatures. Okay. This, uh, this contraption is, wow, well, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't know who thought of this, but not only will you uh, not only will you save the environment but also you get to uh, you get to feed stray animals okay. more likely those animals were neglected thrown away like trash because they were either too sick or too old or sometimes too playful right for all the wrong reasons people dump animals onto the street Okay, and it's about time a uh, it's about time a uh, an invention like this comes our way. Not only you can uh, you can safely recycle all your uh, all your plastics, all your uh, all the all the non bio all the non biodegradable things you have in your house, put them in the box. Then, at the same time, uh, the ven the vendo mode starts running. It, uh, it pours out dog food for uh, yeah it pours out dog food for for stray dogs to to eat uh, to eat away on so it's a it's a win-win it's a win-win situation for both man and animal I don't know who uh, I don't know who thought of this but I salute you for inventing such a for inventing such a machine all right what am I driving at here, LinkedIn? Well, basically, this machine clearly shows to every human on this planet that empathy will harbor, empathy will only bring joy, positivity, and even um, and even more, and even financial success to, of course, to the one who invented this. Right? It brings nothing but positivity. It brings nothing but good. Right? Empathy uh, is the um, is the ultimate okay, is the ultimate device when it comes to uh, when it comes to promoting positivity, positive vibes, so to speak. So here's my power tip for you, LinkedIn. Always employ empathy if you want to promote positivity because, well, empathy is weaponized positivity.
I just saw this post right here on LinkedIn, which, were, which came from uh, the New York Times. And it's about the anime industry being, uh, being a $24 billion global industry. And its animators are being underpaid. I didn't, get, I didn't get to read the full story because I only got the first few paragraphs of the article. But I am going to give my opinion now on that. I have been hearing about the plight of uh, Japanese animators for quite some time now. All right. It's like what they say on, on the anime sales at work. Uh, to sales, uh, sales complimenting each other. They only say one thing. Thank you for your hard work. Right? To the Japanese animators, I'm saying to you the same thing. Thank you for your hard work. This is the main... Well, it justifies um, my, uh, my way of reviewing animes. Okay? I do not judge an anime i do not review an anime based solely on its animation but solely on its storyline on its on the story it tells and the um, and the educational value a person can get from watching this anime All right what about what am i driving at here linkedin well you have Someone has to do their part by um, recognizing the efforts of these, of these Japanese animators, right? They are overworked and underpaid. So the best we could do right now is by, well, um, practicing our attitude of gratitude to them. Especially the, um, the seasoned, an a seasoned anime fan like me. Here, I'm wearing a Yu-Gi-Oh! t-shirt. I am doing my part by not uh, by not reviewing an anime based solely on its animation. Because for me, it's, it's totally unfair for the Japanese, for, for all the animators that have worked hard to the anim, for the anime I'm reviewing. No matter how, no matter, no matter how crappy the animation is, no matter how shitty it is, nope. I am not going to review, I'm not going to judge an anime based solely on that. Because the most important part of an anime is its storyline. All right, to judge it by to judge it solely on animation is stupid. It's idiotic. All right, because not to mention unfair to the animators behind it. They are overworked and underpaid. Right, so by uh, so by. Uh, not judging it based on an, based on animation. It's a, for me. It's a big thank you for them. You have to practice that attitude of gratitude, even in the world of anime. Okay, the Japanese animators well need the support of fans by saying thank you. When an anime is ending, I would say thank you to the animation studio behind it. Right. Because I can feel the grind they regularly go through just to, just to put an anime out. All right? And to say that uh, their, their animation is crappy, what do, what do we fucking know? What do we fucking know about animation? I'm, I'm not an animator. I'm not an animator. But as an anime fan, I truly appreciate the, uh, the hard work they put into the long hours, okay? They put into animating something. You, you just have to appreciate that. And you have to do something to make that appreciation felt. This is my way. I don't review animes based on, based on animation, but rather the storyline, which is more, uh, which makes more sense. So here's my power tip for you, LinkedIn. Never judge an anime solely on graphics. Well, in general, do not base it on graphics alone. Do not base it on graphics. It's the storyline that counts.
I just picked up this um, this text post from Gary Vaynerchuk over at LinkedIn. So I'm going to share this with you right now here on Instagram. Too many small influencers like me uh, are, are too caught up with the numbers, right? I guess... Um, I guess the pressuring themselves on how to uh, how to become bigger influencers, or they want to uh, they want to be famous, so they well, so they're too caught up with the numbers. You know what? Numbers are only there to remind you, not instruct you. Numbers should not be the um, the be all end all when it comes to uh, when it comes to social media presence. But unfortunately, brands, well, most name brands don't see it that way. Just goes to show you, Instagram, that um, brands don't care about influencers. Most brands only care about the numbers. So here's my power tip for you, Instagram. Never be a prisoner of numbers. Instead... Free yourself from them by becoming truer to yourself, to your brand, to your business. Because at the end of the day, it's still your brand or business that's on the line, not theirs. So again, my power tip, never get caught up in the numbers. Numbers can jail you. I'd like to take this opportunity to, uh, well, before I, uh, before I hit the sack, I want to share this LinkedIn post from, from a, uh, from a local motivational speaker named Francis Kong. For some, it'll be a very, very enlightening post, very educational. But for me, it's just a re reiteration of what I've been, what I've been saying all along in the diaries. Rest should be your priority. And, well, this post by Mr. Kong validates that. What am I driving at here, Telegram? Well, it's pointless to work yourself to the bone and not think of uh, getting sufficient rest after your, after your work goal has been accomplished. Mother Nature doesn't Rick uh, doesn't allow us to work that way. All right. Rest should be uh, a top goal of yours when you're uh, when you're working. Okay, when you're working, when you're doing business, when you, especially when you are in a toxic environment. Rest is the easiest goal you will ever draw up. You don't even have to write it down. All you have to do is keep it in your head. Right? And it's also the most immediate. Okay? It should be your most immediate concern when you're working. Whether you're working from home, whether you're... Um, when you're allowed to go to your workplace, rest should always be a goal. Your top goal. So here's my power tip, Telegram. Rest is the most immediate goal you should draw up. If you don't, consider your other goals worthless.